let's let's talk about the collapse Silicon Valley Bank. I've never even heard of Silicon Valley Bank. Yeah, well, it's the um, it's now the second largest banking collapse of all times. Um, yeah, who are they? <laughs> well, they they were a big um, Silicon Valley regional bank. Right. So basically, in America, you've got the big four, uh, the the globally systemic important banks uh, that they they that can't be allowed to fail, and then you've got a whole load of regional banks. Right. And they were basically the big one in Silicon Valley and the big one in venture capital. Right. So about half of all U.S. venture capital firms bank there. Loads and loads of Silicon Valley firms bank there. So right. this isn't really big tech. This is small and medium tech right. in Silicon Valley. Is this connected um, to the Sam Bankman-Fried thing? I mean, a bit. I mean, he probably had an account there. It's the right. sort of thing that he would have done. And he would have... I mean, certainly people who dealt with him would have had an account there. So it was big for the Silicon Valley thing. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they I mean, they had 200 billion in assets. So they were... A, yeah, they, yeah, they were they were substantial. They're not they small were, fry. No, and they were on the S&P 500. Right. Um, now, it's... And, and yeah, and they've, they've collapsed. And, and so basically what I want to do in the segment is just break it down really super simple as to, you know, what, what happened in that. Um, but before I do, right, it is worth talking about the bigger picture that we're in. At the moment here because mm. um we are in a financial system which is being held together by duct tape effectively at this point now there's i mean there's a bit of history here so the there was the asian financial crisis back in the late 90s mm. that was really the last opportunity for the financial system to rectify its problem honestly and it didn't do that right and then we had the dot com and again, you know, you could have taken some pain then and flushed out all the issues. Just a quick thing. Is this uh, the, the Japanese collapse or something like that in the 90s? Yeah, that was the Asian financial yeah. crisis. It wasn't, well, um, I mean, yeah, to a lesser extent, Japan, yeah. but yeah, those sort of Southeast right. Asian countries. That, and then, the, yeah, the dot, dot com yeah. bubble in the early 2000s. Yeah, and then rather than, again, take that honestly, what yeah. they did is they said, well, let's inflate a housing bubble to mm -hmm. get us out of the um, out of the dot com crash. Right. That was the advice. That was Paul Krugman who said, let's do that. Um, and that led to 2008. Ah. And they were like, okay, well, we can either deal with this honestly by going through a bit of pain, mm. or we can inflate a, uh, a cheap money bubble. So wow. they did that, right? Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. So they've engineered this in, in, into this situation. And actually, like, I do do seriously recommend for for, for anyone watching this, even uh, even the YouTubers, go to this link. Right. We've got a free episode of Brokenomics. So I, I do a series um, every Tuesday called Brokenomics, where I break down the financial system. This one is on the site and it's free. So it's not you, you don't even have to pay five pounds to get this one, even though you should pay five pounds because it's not a lot of money. Seriously. And we are doing the Lord's work here. <laughs> yes. uh, but anyway, go and watch this. It's one of our most popular videos. Um, I, I, I've had I've had top people in in finance get in touch with me to say that this is the video that they send to their normie friends to explain how finance works. Brilliant. So this this is I mean, seriously go and check this out, and it will explain a lot of the background to to a lot of the problems we're having now. But anyway, let's get into um, Silicon Valley. So as the name implies, they are a uh, a Bay Area in California uh, bank. They've been open for about 40 years now, and they have got like 30 offices around the US, although it's mainly clustered around Silicon Valley in California, and they do have other offices around the world as well. Um, they were a well-recognized bank, so we've got this link here from um, Silicon Valley Bank. Um, they're, they're, they're talking about how they're, they're proud to have won America's Best Bank from Forbes, who, who don't have necessarily the best track record. <laughs> it was like this year, so a yes. couple of months ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, but there's a lot of stuff which happened amazing. recently. I mean, Jerome Powell, just like um, a week ago, was asked, um, right, so you're raising interest rates really rapidly. Is that going to cause any issues for the banks? And this week he said, nope, nope, can't see that causing any sort of a problem. And then literally a week later, well, one of yeah. America's best banks has just collapsed. Yeah. And and like I say, it was used by a lot of um, Silicon Valley firms. So um, Roku, they had half a billion uh, dollars on there. Um, mm -hmm. Circle apparently had $3 billion on there. And loads and loads of the small and, and medium tech firms, they would have had loads of money in right. there. Um, anyway, so well, what basically led to this is that um, since that 2008 thing we talked about, the Fed decided they were just going to fire hose money at everybody, yeah. right? And what that meant was all these financial institutions have now got all this money. So what are they going to do with it? And one of the things they did with it quite heavily was invest into tech. Mm -hmm. So in the early 2020s, we got this massive injection into tech and startup and all that kind of stuff. And because they were the main bank in this area, uh, they saw their deposits rise quite substantially. So I think at the beginning of 2020, they had something like 60 billion in mm -hmm. assets. And in the space of about a year and a bit, they went from 60 to 200 okay. billion under assets, right? Okay. So I'm big, starting to understand yeah. why Forbes were like, well, hey, this is looking optimistic. Yeah, yeah. And um, when you're a bank, if you're getting all these extra deposits in, 
you need to you need to do something with them on the other side of your balance sheet. You right. need to go and invest them in something. But because we were in a bubble of cheap money, there wasn't really any good option to put their stuff into. So here's the really simple explanation of what happened. Their amount of deposits went up, and the only thing they could invest it in were um, US Treasury notes that mm -hmm. weren't yielding very much at all. So they go out and they buy a whole bunch of um, 10 year, and they had to buy the 10 year because it was the only thing that had even a little bit of yield on it. Right. So they buy these 10 year deposits, right? And um, and they've basically got a now balance sheet that, that balances. They've got deposits on one side and they've got all these investments on the other side. So, I mean, that's how a bank is supposed to run it. I mean, it, it sort of works, right? Then, um, because all this money had been injected into the system, you then start getting all this inflation. And the Biden regime is like screaming at the Fed, get this inflation under control. Now, they, they were the ones who made sure that this money got injected in the first place. They're the one who did the stimmy checks. They're the one who did all of the... What are their options to control inflation if they've just pumped out all this free money that will obviously increase... Well, I mean, this is the thing. So, the, I mean, the, the inflate They do this bait and switch, right? So inflation is when they create a whole load more money. Yeah. And then the price rises are the downstream effect of that. Yeah. But what they do is they pretend that the downstream effects of the prices going up is the inflation and they try and stop that. But it's not. The, 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 yeah. the price is going up. It's just the consequence of having printed all this money. Yeah, because so, it's too much money yeah. competing for too few products. So having printed all this money, I mean, you can't stop the inflation because you've yeah. already printed the money. Yeah. So you can put interest rates up to any number you like. It's not going to undo all that money printing that you've already I mean, you would done. Have, you would have to somehow take it back from the people you gave it to. Right? Yeah, I mean, they kind of do that through quantitative tightening, but right. it's... It's never going to be that much. I mean, it's basically the cat's out of the bag at this point. I so. imagine people are rather resentful about that as well. Yeah, I well, I mean, it's, it's going to get worse before it gets worse. So <laughs> there is that as well. So anyway, so they, so they bought all these treasury notes, it's and they get yield, worse before yeah, it gets little, worse. Yeah. Oh god, it's just worse all the way. <laughs> Sorry, go on. So so they got all these treasury notes, and they're yielding all this low amount. And then because the, the the Biden regime is screaming at them, get inflation under control. Yeah. Even though they can't. They can't stop the money printing that's already been done. What they can do is basically strangle the economy oh, because if you because if you lose your job, you can't go out and buy stuff, and therefore you can't you can't manifest the price rises that they're they're, they're worried about. That makes it look bad. Right. Right? So they put the interest rates up. Right. So that means that instead of being able to buy like ten year um, notes at like half a percent or whatever, you can now buy two year notes at like four and a half five percent. Right. So, so basically, I, I don't know if this works on camera, but basically, they bought a shed load of these, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can buy these. Now, Carl, which of the two would you want to own? Well, now, so I'm I'm no financial expert, but this seems that I'm going to get four point five percent back. Yeah. Over two years. Yeah. Or not point five percent back over ten years. Yeah. So you want this one, don't you? Well, I mean, uh, as a financial illiterate, that's what I'd go for. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, so basically, they had they they had loads of these. They, they uh, oh, billions of them. Well, I can't remember how many they had, but it's like, like at least twenty billion of these, right? And then these come along, so the value of these yeah. drops, right? Slightly less demand I because you, because you're going to want these instead of these, right? Yeah. So um, they had billions of this stuff on their balance sheet, so the balance sheet no longer balances, you see, because yeah. now now it's, it's it's sort of a bit off if mm -hmm. if they sell them. And on top of that, um, the the guys in Silicon Valley, because this this tech bubble is sort of dissipating now, mm. they're not getting the follow on rounds. Right. So their balance sheet is increasingly not balanced. When you say follow on rounds, you mean uh, fewer investors looking to. Get yeah. So when when money. the when the VCs put money into them, they normally yeah. don't put all of the money in. They say we'll put enough money in to keep you for like going to, for the next two years. Yeah. And we we'll see what progress you make, yeah. and then if it looks like you're a winner, we put more in. So yeah. you get these follow on rounds, and those were getting Sensible. squeezed. So anyway, so um. And and they're supposed to put their money into these government-backed securities because, I mean, literally, you are taught at finance school that these are the safest investment possible. Right? I've done finance exams where the correct answer is these are the safest possible investments. Well, I mean, they're backed by governments, right? So, yeah, theoretically, they're going nowhere. Well, so they will never default because they can they can basically just print the dollars yeah. to pay off your loan. By printing those dollars, the value of those dollars goes down and down yeah. and down. So it's, it's like that. And also, right. um, the regulators, so there's like this thing called Basel Free where they made them effectively buy this stuff. So this bank, I mean, did they do anything wrong? I mean, yeah, they did some things wrong, definitely. Hmm. But they were pretty much doing what they were supposed to do. Were they put in an impossible position is what you're saying? Yeah, kind of. They, they could have managed this situation better, but 
the situation we were in was the regulatory framework. It was the regime that was set up. It mm. was what the Biden regime did. It was, I mean, all of these things. It, yeah, yeah. You, basically, what I'm saying is there's going to be more of this is kind of what I'm leading to. So anyway, so then you've got, um, so they so they start to realise this. And um, so a couple of things happen. I mean, first of all, the the guys who work in the bank, they, they realise they got a problem. So the chief financial officer a couple of weeks ago, he sells like 30% of his shares. Smart. Um, the CEO, he sells like ten percent of his shares because he probably realises he can't get away with selling too many. But he's like, he's, he's thinking to himself, obviously, like, what's the most amount of shares that I can sell? <laughs> how, how does it look if the guy who owns the bank dumps all of his shares yeah. in the bank? Not and, great. And and he realises he's got to get his balance sheet um, looking better because I mean, it's still actually at this point, it's still fine. The um the the the, the good side of the balance sheet is still higher than the uh, the, the liability side, mm-hmm. so it's it's fine actually. But you can see a problem is starting to manifest. Yeah, the wind is blowing in the yeah. wrong direction. So, yeah. so he decides I'm going to take um, I'm going to take like twenty billion of these that aren't so good and put them into these things, right? Mm. Now, when you translate, because this is now down here, in order to get that into there, you need to take a bit of a loss. So he sold twenty billion of twenty billion of these, right, and to put them into here. And in doing so, by selling that twenty billion, he took a two billion loss on it. Yeah. But he was going to recycle it into the new thing, and then he was going to make up the money by doing a bit of an equity raise by going out to the market and saying, you know, buy more shares in our bank, and you know that that will top us up and that will balance it out, right? So then, um, the financial analysts who's and the hedge funds whose job it is to look at this stuff notice that he's doing a raise, and they think, oh, okay, let's dig, let's have a proper look at this, and let's see what's going on, right? Right. And then they start to see, oh, hang on a minute, there could be a problem here. So what happens then is is the financial analysts they start telling because I mean let, let's say he's a financial analyst for like I don't know uh, Morgan Stanley or something he's then going to do a flash note around to all his fund managers saying if you hold any of his stock consider reducing it or mm-hmm. sell it outright or something the hedge funds are looking at this and thinking that's a good stock to short so the the share price starts to tumble right because there could be a problem and it's better to be safe than sorry yes right then the venture capitalists in Silicon Valley. They notice that this is happening and they, I mean, they're smart cookies, so they understand that there is a potential problem and even though they look at the bank, the balance sheet is balanced, Mm. they realise if everybody starts taking their money out, it's no longer balanced. So they think, I'll tell you what, I'm going to get my money out first. Let's play this clip, you'll see what I mean. So what we did yesterday, we're a numerous early stage companies uh, and sit in, I sit on the board of a couple of them and the first call was get the money out. And some of the resistance was, well, you know, they'll survive this, then they'll remember that we weren't there for them. And I said, you're not hearing me. Get the money out. You know, you're, and, and there was no resistance after that because it's not worth betting your company on. And if you take a look at Lehman, it took 14 years for the last person to get their money out, and they weren't all made whole. So you need your operational capital at some place where you can access it. And you just can't risk the for- fortunes of the company or yourself if you're a founder. Right. So, I mean, absolutely right. And um, I, I didn't hear any of that. Can you summarize Right. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> Sorry, ba- so basically, is, is, is the head. BC guy saying that he rang up yeah. all of his companies and told them to get the money out right. because it's not worth losing your company over if everybody else does it. Yeah. Um, now, that's absolutely correct. I mean, if I was still a VC and I was in this space, I would have told my investment companies exactly the same thing. Mm. Get your money out. Right. So so the CEOs of these uh, tech companies, they, they get they start to get their money out. Mm-hmm. Right. And then um, what do they do? Well, they they, they, they then tell their best friend. Yeah. that I've just done this, right? And then you tell your second best friend that you've done this. It's kind this. of cascade effect. Yeah. So so this is basically, um, you know, um, toilet paper at the beginning of the pandemic? Yeah. It's it's basically yeah. like that, except right. with venture capital yeah. and, and Silicon Valley banks, right? So yeah. people start pulling their money out, and um, then this happens. A line of about 50 people deep, waiting in the rain, trying to withdraw their money. They got no money. Instead, they were met with FDIC representatives who told them they can return on Monday and withdraw up to $250,000. We had more than 215 in this um, in SVB. How concerned are you? I am pretty concerned. 
<laughs> right. So, so I couldn't hear that either. Uh, oh, okay. I could see the run on the bank. Yeah, it's a run on the bank, and that yeah. guy's saying that um, uh, that he's he's got money in the bank and he's pretty concerned. So that guy is basically somebody's second best friend. Right. Because um, obviously you don't you don't go and stand in bank queues these days. No. You do it on your you do it on your phone or your laptop. You get the money out. Mm. And the only reason you go you you queue up like those people are is because um, the app has said no. Right. And then you're like, oh, shit, I'm going to go and stand in the rain. I'm going to try and get my money out yeah. because he reacted too slow. So the first guy that we saw, he was telling people on Wednesday, get your money out. And that guy standing in the bank on Friday, right. those two days different makes, yeah, makes yeah, a difference. Yeah. And basically what happened is 40 billion of the 200 billion came out. So now the balance sheet does not balance. Well, it's, and, and yeah. not only that, everyone must surely now be panicking. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, okay, you looked you looked quite healthy two days ago. Yeah. But if 40 billion, you know, a quarter yeah. of your revenue suddenly Cla disappears. Classic bank run, yeah. Yeah, just... And, and, and things, all the WhatsApp groups all over Silicon yeah. Valley are now alive with this thing. But it, it's amazing yeah. how this is just caused by people's flightiness, right? Yeah, but I mean, there, there was an underlying issue at the bank. Sure. So... But if, no, if, but if people were like, yeah. oh, we'll just let it ride, it wouldn't have... Just, just cratered, right? Yeah, as long as as long as everybody does that. Yeah, but but this this is why it's rational because that that yeah, yeah. that first guy, that first yeah. VC, like he says to his his company. I mean, he gets his own money out, and he says mm. to his venture capital uh, um, investees, he says, "Get your money out," mm. and it's a rational thing to do because okay, let, so, let's yeah. say you're wrong. Okay, you put the money back. Yeah, you've lost but, nothing. Yeah. But if you're if you're right, you've saved everything. Yeah. So it's like class and classic uh, prisoner's dilemma, mm. basically this thing, mm. right? So. Um, so yeah, and, and and another thing is, um, you know, he well, you didn't hear because your your yeah, your, your earpiece yeah. isn't working. But um, he was saying that he can only get two hundred and fifty um, thousand dollars out. That's because the 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 regulators in the US they insure the yeah. first two hundred and fifty thousand, um, and then anything after that you're on your own. Right. Okay. Ninety eight percent of the deposit at this bank were over two hundred and fifty. Because this is actually a this is a bank for reasonably sophisticated investors. I mean, yes. does I mean it is just a regional bank, but it happens to be in in Silicon in Valley. Silly, yeah, yeah. So therefore, most of the well, ninety eight percent of the deposits were over two hundred fifty grand. That guy on there was basically saying that he he he's being told he can get only two hundred fifty out, right? And they were getting promissory notes for basically the the rest of it, right? Right, and then some in, other interesting stuff happens. So um, some sharp types then start. Um, getting in touch with people like that guy and saying we'll buy your note off you for 90 cents on the dollar right so if you've got 100 million in there we give you 90 million now you've got 90 million we yeah. make 10 million when yeah. we get to cash it if they get to cash it so they're taking a risk for 10% for yeah. or whatever it is and I, I mean I've heard offers going down all the way to like 60 cents on the dollar when over the weekend when this was getting really racy yeah. but some of the some of them did accept like the 90 cents on the dollar I know that much for a yeah. fact um, how low down they went I don't yeah. know but anyway but I mean this the, I mean this is a real problem so um, I mean I will say this to to the viewers of this show who are my second best friend if you've got more than <laughs> if you've got more than 250k in the bank in America like have a think about that have a think about how many banks you want to be in, whether you want to have it all in one bank. And if you're in the UK and you've got more, I think for us it's only like 85K, something like that. Oh, God. Yeah. So if you've got, if anybody that I happen to know has more than 85K in a business bank account, have a word with me after the podcast. Right, because, okay, yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, you only insured up to a certain amount. Um, right. So anyway, so what, what was happening? over? So over the weekend, um, all the banking analysts yeah. were then thinking, Oh right, okay. This has happened now to to one of the largest regional banks, right? What's going to happen on Monday morning when this opens? So I bet you over the weekend, all the banking analysts were not that. I mean, they they were in the office. Mm -hmm. They they were doing this work on all of the other regional banks, right? And all the hedge funds, well, they would have been doing whatever hedge funds do. I mean, I'm just going to make up a story here. I don't know if this is true or not. I mean, I'm just making this up. Um, you know, if you're if you're the senior um, credit officer for one of these regional banks, you probably try to take your dog for a walk on Sunday, and there was a bloke outside saying, "Oh, mate, you've uh, you've dropped your backpack." It's like, oh, no, I didn't. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, you dropped your backpack." And oh, look, there's fifty grand in it. And it's like, oh, by the way, before I give this to you, how solvent is your bank? 
<laughs> I'm not saying hedge funds do that, but some version of that would have been playing out all yeah. weekend because people, I mean, the market, I mean, as we film this, um, the markets are going to, well, don't, they, 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 I think they might have opened in the U. I don't know. I, I think, if, if, yeah, New York Stock Exchange might be open by the time we, right. we start recording this or, or maybe in like an hour or two or something. Right? So um, I thought it was three o'clock. Oh, it could, it yeah, is. it could be. It could be. Yeah. I mean, they just had a daylight savings change, so it's yeah, throwing yeah. me off. When yeah, it, yeah, I'm not sure either, but it's yeah. fairly soon. It's fairly soon. The market's yeah. going to open, and basically, all the hedge funds and all the all the, all the funds they they want to hit the ground running yeah. right as soon as this takes off. Okay, so, um, the Biden regime. Um, have not covered themselves in any glory on this. Because like yeah. I say, Jerome Powell, he was saying a week ago that there's no systemic risk, right? Yeah. And if you remember, just a few days ago, um, Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, she was in Ukraine. Yeah. Right? And so she was she was in Ukraine saying, whatever you need, we've got your back. We're going to cover you. Yeah. Right? And then this is going on here, and like they're just they're just not doing anything. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, this bank is going down, right? Yeah. And and the people in the know are screaming about this. There's a guy called David Sachs who's like a prominent. He's like besties with Elon Musk, and he's yeah, a yeah. prominent um, venture capitalist. I mean, he's screaming about this stuff, right? Um, and uh, he's saying, look, if you if you don't do this, what you've done is you created a two tier banking system, hmm. because um, why would you have your money in a regional bank where you're only insured up to two hundred and fifty? Hmm. You would go and put it in one of the big four. So mm -hmm. he's saying, get get a grip right now, otherwise the next bank's going to go down. Yeah. Right. Then, um, actually, let's skip over the David Rosenberg one because I've, I've talked past it. Get David, uh, yeah, let's go to no the um, uh, the the story. Yeah. Right. So then this happens. Right. So on Sunday, um, Signature Bank. So we just had the the second largest bank failure ever mm -hmm. on Friday. On Sunday, we get the third largest bank failure ever. Jesus Christ. Because a New York bank has just gone down. Because it's exactly the same thing. So all these people are thinking, right, so, yeah, my bank's probably all right, but why take the risk? Yeah. So this is, this is like, flowing now. This is, this is starting to build up steam. So that bank goes down. Because what will happen is everybody, everybody's doing wire transfers into the big four banks. Yeah, yeah. Right, now that's – you don't – you. You don't want that, right? Because I know, I know. What you, you're probably thinking, what's the based position here? What's the libertarian position? Mm. And it's like, oh, just you know, no bailouts of the banks. Yeah, yeah fair yeah. enough. But the problem is, is if you don't, um, basically, you'll end up with only four banks in control of everything, and everyone loses a lot of money. Well, that as well, yeah. yeah. But four banks control everything, and then only four people need to get in a room to make a decision and say, right, from now on, we're not banking conservatives yeah. or like whatever it is. A very small number of people need to do this. <laughs> so um, it probably was right to, to, to do a bailout. But when I say bailout, I mean, um, take the equity tier to zero. So the management and the shareholders, they lose everything, mm. but, but ensure the deposits. That's probably the right thing to do. Mm. And you don't necessarily even need to do it at 100%. You could do it like 90 cents on the dollar or whatever. But you, you, mm. but you basically, you need to act fast because otherwise everybody's going to bail out. And that's what happened on Sunday as his next right. bank went down. So the Biden regime, they then figure out that they can no longer dither any longer. Oh, really good. Yeah. So they Fine. announce that they are going to be backstopping this stuff and they are going to be doing the bailout that I described, which is like right. protecting the pos depositors, but not the rest of it. Right. Here's the problem they've got is there are something like 620 billion of unrealized losses on other balance sheets. So this one, this, this bank, the, the Silicon Valley one, they had, they had 20 billion of unrealized losses. But yeah. if you add up all the other banks, it's 620, right? So it's like half of what we're sending to Ukraine. Right? Yeah, well, it's, it's a lot of money. Yeah. And um, so, so now, so not only did they have to say, okay, well, we're backstopping this and backstopping the, the New York bank, mm. but we're also going to open up a line of credit so these banks can sell us their underwater assets back at par. Yeah. Which is going to cost them six hundred twenty billion. So if 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 like Yellen and the Biden regime had been doing their job on Wednesday or at least Thursday or Friday, this would only be two hundred billion. Well, no, it, it wouldn't even be that. It'd be eighteen billion because that's how much they were underwater. Right. right. But because they dithered, it went from eighteen to like six hundred twenty. Right. And to be fair, if they'd left it any longer, it would cost even more. Yeah. But you know that that's the sort of situation. But this in, should have been day one. Yeah, it should. It, well, it should have been day one. So, um, I mean, there's there's a good film that I like. I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out a film recommendation. It's um it's Margin Call. Right. So that is like the finance people's like favorite film about finance because what it, what it is it, it happens in a bank over the space of basically one night where they realize they've got a problem, and they they work through the problem over the night and then they they have to act fast. They have mm. to they because it in in finance it's all about how fast you are. Right. Like if you're one trading day faster than the next guy, you make 
like 90% of the money. Mm. Now, I'm not expecting the Biden regime to be that fast, but I mean, come on, they had like three days. It was, it was quite obvious. I mean, it's bloody obvious to me, and I'm not even I'm not even yeah. active in this. I'm, just I, I'm sure they've Twitter. got incredibly experienced people who are looking at this and saying, well, this is what's happening. The, the problem is the banks employ um smart people who are who are doers and the regulators employ smart people with phds who do computer models right so they would have been spinning up their computer models and doing their mm. academic type stuff but it's, it's a different kind of thinking and it's too slow right right um so you know what's what's the fallout from this i mean should you be worried it's like well technically no because you're backstopped but the problem is is the whole world has just woken up to the fact that banks are like vulnerable that you don't want to have more than 250 or 85 of you in the UK mm -hmm. in any one particular bank. You want to spread it around. Mm -hmm. um, they've understood that there is sort of this systematic risk that could happen at any time. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand that as we as we started filming this at, at one UK time, I think I think it's eight um, Eastern time that this goes out. Mm -hmm. That's um, when, or is it nine? Anyway, anyway, Biden is speaking as as we're talking right. now. So he's he's currently laying out his response to this now there is a link that i sent john on don't call it up yet john but I, there's a link i sent john on friday because there is a way of monitoring this so mm -hmm. there is an etf that tracks um the those regional banks and it tracks the it tracks the equity tier so yeah. this is the bit that is going to get wiped out if this response isn't good enough so this etf is going to go to zero if if there's like a, a complete collapse of the regional banks now it was already down five percent on friday so we we will call up in screen in just a second and we'll see whether the markets believe Biden or not. Because it was already down 5% on Friday. If, pe if people believe Biden, then it's free money. You know, mm. it should be up. It will be green. And if it's down by anything more than like 1% or 2%, then basically markets are saying, Biden, you're full of shit. You've, this is a bigger problem than you're admitting. Right. So so let's, do you want to call it up, John? Let's see where we are. Oh, uh, So mine's... Down, down 6%. Yeah, that's right. not good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so markets are. I mean, he's talking, and the markets are saying, "Yeah, um, don't believe you." I mean, I, it, it, I suppose it could be worse. So he's 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 obviously he's obviously throwing money at it. Yeah. Um, but all the same, they don't believe him. So yeah, that's a worry. Keep an eye on that. And if that if that continues to go down, then um, we've got a bigger problem. And this is this is all we'll be talking about. But you know, maybe whatever amount of money he's throwing at it will do it. Let's hope for the best, eh? If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Epoch series, this episode on William Wilberforce. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.